Hey there guys, so I just got done watching Halloween 3 Season of the Witch and guys to be honest I just wanted to jump on here and give you guys my thoughts and my reactions on the movie as quick as I could. So if you haven't already guys don't forget to subscribe to the channel but for now let's start talking Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Happy, happy Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Halloween 3 season of the witch revolves around an evil Irish mask maker who pretty much wants to kill all of the children all over the world on Halloween night and he plans to do that with these masks he's making. So the masks themselves they kind of turn into real life objects on the night of Halloween when the kids are listening to a Halloween jingle on the TV. But guys as I said I'm going to start this one off with my positives and my negatives we will get to the masks a little later. My first positive guys with this movie is again how much it feels like the first two movies. Now one difference with Halloween 3 is it does not revolve around Michael Myers so a lot of people they're not fans of that. For me I honestly do not mind it. The original idea for Halloween 3 was every year we'd have a different story on Halloween so kind of like an anthology with a movie every single year. It would be kind of like American Horror Story if you think of it that way. And for the most part, that probably could have worked if they made a second movie, The Anthology, but they did bring Myers back for the second one. So you have to forgive audiences for thinking Michael Myers would come back for Halloween 3, especially when the slasher craze at that time had just kicked off. The story picks up when a patient is admitted to a local hospital about a week before Halloween. Now his doctor is played by Tom Atkins, so his name is Dan in this, and he is the main protagonist of the movie. So he gets this patient who pretty much warns him, you know, that he is going to die, someone is after him, and they're pretty much going to kill everyone. At first the doctor doesn't believe him, but pretty quickly his patient is actually murdered. So he gets his eyes gouged out, and the guy who actually murders him pretty much just goes into a car, sets himself on fire and blows the car up. So the story picks up from there. So we have Tom Atkins character, uh, the doctor Dan, who pretty much teams up with the daughter of his patient and they go to the town of Santa Mira to investigate. And that is definitely a big positive of mine, the town of Santa Mira itself. Now, as I said, guys, this movie, it is not a slasher movie. It has nothing to do with the first two Halloween movies. Even at points in this film, they watch the original Halloween in the TV. So it's a completely separate universe. This movie to me is very much a pod movie. You know, even the town of Santa Mira is the town from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. So when I watch it, I don't think of this as being one of the slasher movies of the 80s. And if you go into that with that outlook, you will enjoy the movie so much more. But the town of Santa Mira is definitely my favorite part of this whole movie. I love a good kind of ghost town, you know, an airy, sleepy town that you get, you know, in the middle of nowhere in America. This is definitely that, you know, the town itself, it's very familiar as well to the fog, so John Carpenter's The Fog. No one is really in the town, there's a few townspeople there, but they're all quite suspicious, you know, they're all quite quiet, they keep to themselves while also being nosy when something is going on. Now the town as well, it's monitored constantly with CCTV cameras by the factory where Con Cochran works. So he's our big bad of this movie. He's this kind of Irish mask maker that just wants to kill all of the children. It doesn't really explain why, you know, there's a little bit of how America doesn't respect the traditions of Halloween anymore, but it doesn't go completely into detail why he wants to do it. But I do like the town itself, you know, it's very kind of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory meets The Handmaid's Tale. That's what I thought of when I watched it. Everyone knows they're being watched in the town, they know their CCTV cameras, and they know that something weird is going on in this factory that's bringing business to the town. And speaking of Con Cochran, again, he is the big bad this one. He's played by Dan O'Hurley, and just like Donald Pleasance in the original two Halloweens, he brings something big to this role. You know, he is the big star of this film, really. Now, I will say, and I'll talk about it in my negatives, his dialogue is not the best. You know, as well as at the town of Santa Mira, all the awful, awful Irish accents and the Irish dialogue they have in that town is absolutely atrocious but the actor himself you know he de he does definitely bring something big to the role he gives it a presence you know even as he's delivering kind of silly dialogue the way he delivers it makes you believe what he's saying and you want to see more of him on screen. I did also like you know his back and forth with Tom Atkins both of them they are quite good actors Daniel Hurley is definitely the better of the two actors 
But you know, when Tom Atkins is struggling in certain scenes, he keeps him going. He keeps that entire momentum up for that scene. Now kind of having that eerie, suspenseful feel of Santa Mira, it is definitely there in a town you see it straight away. But when you add the score to this film, it only ups the factor. Again, the score, it's so similar to the first two Halloween movies. It feels like a John Carpenter score. You know, one thing I will say about Halloween, the first three movies are closer in how they look and feel than all of the others. Even in this one, you know, the way the movie itself is filmed, everything looks crisp, it looks clear. It looks a lot more sophisticated as a movie compared to what came after. You know, you put that score in there as well. It's a different score, of course, from the first two movies, but it's a great one for building tension. It builds suspense constantly, especially in the opening scene of the movie and the last act of the movie as well, when constant reveals are coming out. The score in this one is great, but of course I have to add in there the jingle as well. So it is the Halloween tree jingle happy happy halloween and some people absolutely hate this song some people love it i'm definitely in the camp who loves this song i'll throw it on halloween you know it's our own holiday jingle that we get from this movie it is played a lot in this film i constantly wonder why they're playing it so many times on the tv like i get that they're there to kind of kill the children but it's constantly played on every tv station every radio station in this movie but the reveals that keep coming, you know, we got robots, we got witchcraft, we got Stonehenge. There's a lot in this movie. It's absolutely batshit crazy. It is bonkers, I will say that. But I enjoyed it about it. It's a very B movie from the 80s. And I was all here for it. Another positive guys I will give to this movie is the mystery surrounding it as well. So throughout the entire movie we're constantly trying to find out what these three masks actually do. You know we all have these guys, these men in black guys who are constantly following people around. They're quite mysterious and we don't know what their purpose is. They're kind of like a load of Michael Myers without the mask. When I watched that when I was young, they used to absolutely terrify me. And that's the same for Con Cochran. We don't really know throughout the film what his purpose is. We know he wants to kill children, but we don't really know why. And the deaths in this movie are probably some of the best deaths in the entire Halloween series. So we get a child in this movie that pretty much wears like a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin mask. Now it does turn into a real pumpkin when that jingle comes on and the mask begins to rot. So insects, spiders, snakes, everything starts coming out of his head while his parents are in the room watching. As well as that, you know, we get a decapitation at one point. We get a woman who is playing with the kind of the badges on the mask themselves and a lightning bolt hits her in the face. And I mean, it crucifies her face. She looks absolutely awful. Her entire jaw comes off. And guys, my last positive with this movie is the entire final act. So guys, this is definitely a B-movie from the 80s. It hasn't aged very well in my opinion, but that last act, I appreciate how absolutely bonkers it is. You know, we got witchcraft, we got robots, we got Stonehenge. There is a lot to juggle in that final act of the movie. We've got people sounding like leprechauns that for some reason want to kill all the kids in the world. I like the last act in the movie in this because it's reveal after reveal. Like even Ellie, the main girl in this, at one point gets revealed to be a robot. Which pretty much comes out of nowhere. In my opinion, that scene didn't even need to be in there. But I appreciate they threw it in just to throw everything at the wall towards the end of the movie. Now my favourite part of this entire movie though is that last scene. You know, it's a scene that kind of ends on a really sombre, dark note. Where we don't know, do the kids around the world die on Halloween night or do they survive? So our main character, Dan, you know, he is shouting into a phone, telling the TV stations to stop playing the jingle. That is going to kill everyone. We don't know, does that happen or not? You know, we kind of get a reveal that some of the TV stations turn it off, but one last one, he's trying and trying and the movie cuts to black. It is a great way to end the movie and it reminded me a lot of the first Halloween where we can hear Meyer's mask, you know, but we don't know where he is. Similar with this, you know, we know maybe the TV stations got turned off, maybe they didn't, but we just don't know what happened to the kids. It was a great way to end the movie, and again, if this had been an anthology season every single year, what a great way to end that story. And now, guys, the negatives with this movie. So I have touched on this one already. It's the awful, 
awful Irish accents in this movie as well as the dialogue that's been written for them. So you know, it, you're kind of expecting someone in this movie to be like, do you have a pot of gold? Don't know why that is, don't know where that came from in the US, but we get it in droves in this film. There's someone you're Irish and you're watching an American movie and the characters just don't sound the way they should sound, you know. Even with the Irish accents they have in this, they don't sound very sinister, they sound happy-go-lappy, you know, where's me pot of gold? Irish. As well as that I wasn't a huge fan of Tom Atkins character that's why I didn't mention him too much in my positives. For me he's an extremely unlikable character in this movie you know he's he's a family man he's married to a wife but as a doctor he doesn't seem to do much you know he's married and he has kids but he seems to just be flirting his way through the entire movie. You know 10-15 minutes into the movie he takes off with this random woman they hook up in a motel it there's nothing there in his character where you root for that character to survive towards the end it's a very male 80s type hero character i just wasn't a fan i like tom atkins i think he's great in everything he's in i just didn't like his character in this one the character of ellie i liked a lot more but of course she gets revealed to be a robot so she doesn't make it to the end of the movie the plot in this as well would definitely be a negative you know I like the idea of it I like that spooky Halloween type story that the masks will turn into real things but none of it is really explained in this film so we know the pumpkin jack-o-lantern turns into a real pumpkin but I always kind of figured does the witch turn into an actual witch does the skeleton mask just turn into bones on someone's head and as well as that why is there three masks you know why is there just three masks we know not everyone's going to be going out and getting the exact three masks throughout america so it's not a great way to kill all of the children beyond that when i was young watching it in ireland i wasn't sure the time zone when this would all happen so yes the jingle plays in the us on us tv stations but by the time the us children die everyone else in the world would probably know what's happening. There were definitely a lot of plot holes there where I just didn't think they thought things through. The whole Stonehenge thing as well, I got that it links it to Ireland because we needed that because of the main character, but it all just came across as really silly. No one knows how they got Stonehenge all the way from Ireland to the US. There are a lot of plot holes that I just didn't like. And my last negative guys is just to reveal as Ellie as that robot at the end. I didn't think they needed to throw it in necessarily. I did throw it in my positives because you know it was fun but did it need to happen? Not particularly. But guys look they're just my positives and my negatives on the movie. It's definitely a mixed bag for me. You know I will not say this is one of the worst Halloween movies but it is definitely not one of the best. This has always been middle ground for me. As a standalone movie it is absolutely great. It's super super fun. Is it anything to write home about? No, but you can throw it in and I can see why it became a cult classic. I wish this didn't have the name Halloween attached to it. I think if this was just called Season of the Witch, it would do a lot better, which we've seen over the years. But it is called Halloween Tree, you know, it is, as somebody said, the bastard child of the family and most people over the years have come to appreciate it. As I said, guys, it's a mixed review. It's good at certain parts and it's awful at other parts. If you like the movie though, let me know in the comments below, change my mind if you can. And if you absolutely hate this movie, you can let me know that also. As always guys, subscribe to the channel just so you don't miss another video. I do plan to do a lot more Halloween films in the next few weeks, so there will be a series on that. But until next time guys, hi ho Happy Halloween, Halloween.